Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with my boy Albert. Albert, what's up? What's up? Killa. Hello. Albert's looking jacked. We were just uh, talking about how his body's changing like a son of a bitch. He's looking better every time I see him. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Albert is. Albert, if they don't, if they want to follow you, how do they find you on Instagram? Just so they can go check you out if, they, yeah, if they're not familiar at, with my at, channel. At the Albert Preciado and just Google me, Albert Preciado, you'll find me. That's right. You said Google my ass. Google me. Bitches. Yeah. Hey. Super important today, we're going to talk about Comeback Kid. Yeah. That's what I want to talk about, right? Look, I don't really care where you are right now. Everybody has the ability to come back, right? Hey, if you screwed up, okay, you can come back. If you burn someone, if today you lied and you're a freaking cheat and you hate who you are, you can come back. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. We're in a world right now in society where a lot of people, they should be cheering people on to change their lives and come back. But we're in a society whenever... Somebody screws up and then they start to change their life to get back on track. People are like, oh, wait a minute. You don't know what that guy did before. You yeah. don't know what she did. You don't know what they've done. Hey, dude, everybody is going to screw up. And some of us screw up really bad. And you know what I've learned? The biggest obstacles that you can overcome, it makes you immensely qualified to help other people who've over, who are struggling with those same obstacles. And another deal is, is that life isn't fair, man. Some yeah. of us are dealt a crazy-ass hand, and some of us go out and screw our own shit up. I've yeah. done both. Yeah. Okay? So, Albert, today I want to talk about the come up. Right. Um, I know that you have a big audience on on social media. Um, I know that building a brand was something that was important to you. I know that, you know, like going back, not to talk about like Grant Cardone, but like you wanted to get on stage and he was like, oh, no, I don't know. And you were like, fuck it. I'm going to go build my own stage. Yeah. Then. Right. And I like that. That's one of the reasons why I respect Albert a lot. I love the way that he operates with his family and his team and stuff like that. But I really like that if that you don't need a handout. Back of my shirt says no handouts. Yeah. Okay. So I like that that you're a no handout guy, and that's probably one of my favorite things about you, is that you figure out how to do the work, get it done, be innovative, and be creative. So anybody that's watching this, number one, tell us who you are, right? And then let's start with your story. I want you to talk about the comeback, like straight up. And I want you to get raw. I want you to tell us anything and everything that we would know so that they can relate with you on the same shit that happens in their life, happens in yours. And then also some good moves that you made that really helped you uh, get to where you are today. Yeah, well, I, I think, Andy, like, maybe you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have a chip on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. I have a chip on my shoulders. And, like, Grant, uh, I learned a lot from him. I have nothing but respect for him. Yeah. Uh, the the thing he did for me was he motivated me to believe in myself more. So when he just didn't allow me to speak on this stage, I said, I, I, I have to start my own stage. Yeah, but I and, love that, bro. And, and, I've been told no a thousand times. Yeah. And, you know, I liked you. And then when I heard that, I was like, oh, I really like this guy now. Not because of him, because of anybody. Yeah. Dude, listen, I've, I've gotten told by people I know before. And you know what? Dude, I don't put my head down. You know what I say? All right, I'm going to shove it down their throat. Yeah. Oh, you, you, get, you get very pumped up. And I, I remember the first, because of the Driven event that we started, you were at, I think it was Driven 6. Like three years Driven ago. Driven 5. And yeah, and you had like 30,000 followers. Yeah. And, we were and, just cracking up, guys. You, I had, you, I you, had you, social, you came, zero you, social you, media. You came on my, on my podcast and you, you dropped by. Then we went to eat su some sushi. Mm -hmm. But I remember that you were so fired up. And, and you were like... And I remember that you got a few people that were saying things about Andy Elliott and is Andy Elliott real or not. But all you did was just used it for motivation and, and you just it's used food. it and you, and you just it drived you to, uh, to come up. And j just like me, like the same thing. That, like when people don't believe in me, uh, the biggest message people can hear and listen to right now is the only person you need to believe in you is you. Mm -hmm. So right. when you use that and, and you just go for it, like what's going to happen? W worst case, you fail. And but what if you never try? Yeah, that's worse. So yeah. so talk to us a little bit about your right, like learning English, right? Yeah. Like that's not your first language, right? Right. Okay, so you had to learn English. Yeah. Y you come here, right? Or you're born here. So so I, I was born here. Like my, my parents, uh, they 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 probably uh, made me in Mexico, but they crossed the border. I was born here. So I'm, I'm very, I'm a very passionate and, and very proud Mexican, but I'm a very proud American because uh, America gave me the opportunity to like go after my dreams. Yeah, I love that. And, By the, and that's probably one of my favorite things about you. Yeah, is you know my my whole family, my wife's Mexican, my kids yeah, yeah. are Mexican, dual citizenship, right? Like, like I love that you kick ass here and you're in the Latin community really hard. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, you're you're very Mexican too, though. I don't know if you I feel like I'm a Mexican. Yeah, you're like a Mexican. Uh, yeah, just, just like like white looking Mexican. Yeah, yeah. I was like, trying to like, tan just a little bit ago out in the like, sun. Like trying we, to we we uh, we have the same style, but 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 yeah, like I I went to school and my parents they said you know what I I don't want you to be in the ghetto, so I took the yellow school bus and I used to travel an hour every day, wake up at five in the morning, take the school bus, go to like a better neighborhood. Uh, that's what my parents thought. So I used to go to the valley, and it was like 99%. Everybody was white. Mm -hmm. So I'm like the only Mexican kid. But my parents, I don't think they thought about, wait, he's going to go there, and he doesn't speak a word of English. So I went there, and I learned the hard way. So they put me in a special ed class. Then, I, then they transferred me to ESL because they figured out, well, he's not really special ed. He just doesn't understand the language. So they put me on sp special ed. So then I, I st a, sp a special ed, then uh, ESL class. English, second language. So then I start learning English, and then my, my Spanish gets fucked up. So then I have, like, fucked up Spanish, fucked up English. So, like, I'm, I'm there, and I'm just kind of, like, winging it. And it was just hard, man. Like, elementary school, middle school, high school. I'm bullied. I'm made fun of. I'm being called white, uh, wetback all the time. And that just fueled me to like show them like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna teach you guys a lesson, and and, and that just motivated me to be better. I love that shit. Um, by the way, you stuttered, right? Yeah. Okay, I stuttered. Yeah. I tell people all the time. People are like, man, you're such a good speaker. I'm like, dude, I stuttered, like I couldn't even get what. I'd be like, what, 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 what. I couldn't say anything, dude. I felt like an idiot. And then I started training myself, and I started writing down word tracks, like things that I wanted to memorize. And then literally my brain just, like, started to skip ahead and be like, hey, I already know what I'm going to say, and I stopped stuttering. I yeah. beat it. So anybody, you guys, you can beat anything. You know what I mean? I mean, you can change. I mean, no matter what the world thinks of you, he said in the beginning, it's like what you think about you. Five, That's a really hard five, thing. Five years ago, like, like how much money were you making five years ago? I mean, I went to zero five years ago. I quit my W two job in twenty nineteen. I was making two million a year, and I went to zero, and I was broke so for five a year. years ago. To now, you turn your life around. Yeah, I fifty x my income in three years. Uh, I made a lot of money, and in two years, I went broke, becoming a different person. See, the person I was couldn't live the life I have today. Yeah. I had to recreate my whole life, man. I mean, dude, there's like a, a heart that has to be retrained, like. Really, I'm going to tell you guys a, a secret. I had to devalue money. This is a super important thing. If you want to make more money, you got to devalue money and you got to retrain your mind how to get freedom and how to recreate your, your life. Like when I, when I devalued money, I started making more money and I know what to do with because my intentions changed, my life changed, everything changed, my heart changed. I just became a better person, man. I know a lot of people that want to make a lot of money right now and they think it's going to be a new strategy. It's not. You got to go look in the mirror. The world will give you what you become. Yeah. So, but that's the deal. So you're transitioning, you're changing, you get into sales, right? Or do you get into real estate young? What do you do? Cause you're in real estate yeah. now and you're doing very well in real estate. But like, so what's the journey? You're, 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 you know, it's like, you're, you're this comeback guy, right? What are some lessons you learned, right? You know, what are some. So, so when it changed this is I'm a college kid. Uh, so I'm going to college and I have a, uh, like a best friend. His name is Felipe and we're so broke and Felipe gets 20 bucks from his dad. I get 20 bucks from my dad, and we go to Costco, and they have this, this nice, beautiful Absolute bottle. I don't know if you ever had Absolute, but mm -hmm. it's Absolute vodka. It's like 1.75 liter, uh -huh. and it's cheap, so it's 26 bucks. I'm, I'm a college kid, so I'm like, let's go, let's go get that Absolute, and, and let's go to the beach. And we go to the beach, and we're trying to hook up. We're just college young kids, uh, young adults that want to get laid, mm -hmm. and we want to make some money, but we don't have money. We're broke, so... That's our approach, and I was very insecure from like elementary school, mm -hmm. middle school, and high school. That yeah. I just wanted to get the hot chicks because I couldn't get the hot chicks in, in elementary school and yeah. or, or high school. So we start going to the beach, and we have our absolute liquid courage, and and, w and we're trying to get girls. And and then one day, I just realized, like, you know what, hey Felipe, why are we always ending up in IHOP? But we're broke. We didn't get laid, and we're just here having breakfast. We're hungover, but then we have we. I, I see this young guy, this young guy, another young guy, and they're there with a hot chick, hungover, but with a hot chick, a Rolex and a Beamer or S five hundred Mercedes, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what are they doing? What are we not doing? And then one day I just asked one of the guys, hey, so so what do you guys do? And he's like, I do real estate. 
So I'm like, you know what? I got to get into sales and, and start selling real estate. No, so that's when I got into real estate when I was 19, 19, 20 years old. I got, I get into real estate. I start selling real estate. Then 12 years ago, I decided to just start my own brokerage. So we start mortgage company, real estate company. We get into that. We start making some money and, you know, we go through ups and downs. Mm -hmm. and, and then right away, uh, I, I get into, cause I'm very big on self-development. Uh -huh. So I, I hired a uh, Grant Cardone and Patrick McDavid as my mentor. So 10 years ago, I hired both of them. So the first grant, I went to Cancun to a seminar where he had 35 people. I was one of the 35 people and, and he started mentoring me. But then I said, you know what? I learned uh, sales, 10X, scale, scaling, uh, thinking bigger, going all out, like doing more. But then I'm like, this is not enough. It's, it's very disorganized, um, it, a lot of effort a lot of activity, but it's very disorganized. I need more operations, like systems, processes. Mm -hmm. How do you build a real business? So I didn't feel like Grant Cardone was a real business guy. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was more like a trainer, like a, like a, like a coach, like a sales guy, mm -hmm. but I needed more operational side for you got business. That from Patrick. So I had a mortgage company, a real estate company. So I'm like, how do we create uh, like structure? Mm -hmm. So I hired Patrick, I pay him 10,000 bucks for four one-on-one -on -one sessions. It includes, was cheap. Includes Wish dinner. we could do that right now. Yeah, includes dinner, uh, going to his house, hanging out, lunches. Shit. Uh, so I was hanging out with, with Patrick but David, and, and the best part is I only had to give him half. So I gave him five grand, and I finished all the four sessions, and then finally I gave him the other five grand. So uh, the reason, though, why I, I know I got Patrick's attention was because I did get a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. So I got a Ferrari pre-owned, and I started using it just to get attention, but this was 10 years ago. Like nowadays, everybody's trying to do the same thing, but 10 years ago, I got it and I could barely afford it. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's sales playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. But I sent a DM to Patrick. I, I showed it to him and I said, hey, you know what? I have a 458 Italia, which I named my daughter Italia after the Ferrari 458. I love that. And I told him, hey, I have a Ferrari 458 like you. Uh, let's go to the racetrack. Which one do you go to? I'm here local. Uh, I'm in West Hollywood. You're in Glendale. And then he DM me back. Hey, I'm in, I'm in uh, Dallas. I just moved out. And I'm like, oh, fuck, shit. So then a week later, I reached out to him and I said, hey, you know what? I'm in Dallas. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave, though. I'm, I'm just here Friday. Uh, I just got here. It's Friday. And I'm gonna, I have to fly back tomorrow. Any way we could meet up really quick. I can stop by your office. So I went to his office, we met up, and it was one-on-one, -on -one and it was free. And he just said, show up, contact Mario. Went there, started the relationship, ended up with the $10,000 uh, coaching. So I got him, and then he, he just taught uh, sales, uh, uh, operations, systems, processes. And then uh, still just flew with the operation side, and I just focused on the sales and the drive and the, and the vision, and we just grew the companies. I love and that. and that, that, that's what happened. That's why I got into sales and real estate and mortgage. And I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just, I just wanted to go for it. I, was, I, I wanted big things in life. Um, so what, what's one of the hardest things you've ever had to overcome? You know, a lot of people don't talk about this, but uh, I don't know if you've been through this, but when you're growing a business and the more you grow, you have uh, Thursdays, Wednesdays, where you're like, you know what? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cut payroll on Friday. Mm. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, I gotta pay everybody before me. 
Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of people don't see the dark side in business. Mm-hmm. People don't see when you get attacked, when you get sued, when you get a, when people try to take advantage, when people steal from you, when people backstab you. And uh, there's ups and downs. But when you have mentors and you're able to pick up the phone and be like, hey, Patrick, like this is happening. I'm getting sued. They want to settle for half a million bucks. Uh, it's going to go on three years possibly. Should I settle? Should I not? And then they give you the advice. Hey, you know what? Do this. Just settle. Just don't, don't waste time with the going on for, for, for year after year. And or you or you're able to call somebody like like at that level. There's there's many people, right? There are people who have had they, that they, yeah. same and, and that same that situation many times. And you're able to handle it. But like for me, um, Andy, like I I didn't start um, two three years ago, and I I didn't just start making money with social media. I didn't even make money through social media. Like I made money, I made millions just with my real estate company, a mortgage company. I started doing my driven events, started making money like that. I made millions like that. And then after that, that's when I started getting into the online space, started getting into the coaching uh, world mm-hmm. and all that. But before that, I, I made all my money with businesses. So that, that's where I started, just business, making mistakes, getting into, the, into IRS problems, liens, uh, problems with the state of California, getting sued, uh, people wanted, wanting to take me out. And, and it's been a battle. Like it's, it's been ups and downs, ups and downs. And the bigger you, you get, the bigger problems you you have, and like I'm, I'm I I love it. Like nothing, uh, not, not nothing. What is faces me? What is some good advice that you would give to anybody that's wanting to build a big life? Right. What are some skills you think that you need to learn? Some important skills that you think that have helped you right now that you would say, if I could just specifically tell you of a yeah. couple skills that I think are really key, what would they be? Investing, uh, investing. Like there's the, the two biggest investments you could make are in yourself, number one. I'm sure people have heard this before. And then spending but that's the in, truth. investing in your business. Right. In yourself and your business. Um, and go go to yourself for a minute. Yeah. What what are some things that have helped you, you know, recreate, change, reprogram, alter your identity? You know, what are some things that have helped you? In in the beginning when I was nineteen years old, mm-hmm. I, I was reading one book a week. Mm-hmm. So I, I just went through one book a week, one book a week, one book a week, one book a week. And I read a lot of bad books, but then I came across that book uh, from Grant Cardone, Sell or Sell. It, it was called Sell, sell to be Survive. Oh, before the Sell to, mm-hmm. before the Sell to, Sell or Be Sold. Before that one, he had Sell Sell to Survive, I think, and it was the original one. Had a lot of grammar errors and things like that. I, I read the first book. I, I heard the audio book, and and I just listened to the audio, and and I and I I, I got a lot from him. But he he learned from other people before him, mm-hmm. so. That changed my life a lot. And then before before Grant, I went to a Tony Robbins seminar and I paid the ninety nine dollar ticket in the back. And and just people can say like, oh, walking on fire, that's stupid. You don't need to do that. But for me, self improvement changed my life. Like without self improvement, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, me too. But like like I I'm I'm not supposed to be here. Like I I was a painter at six years old. I used to paint homes with my dad in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. And and I was six. That's when I learned like you know what? There's bigger things in life than just being. Uh, average, you know, because um, I mean, being average or middle class, it's the same shit. You're still broke. Yeah. Do you believe uh, this is important? Because changing your, you know, you can't change like your DNA, right? Because your parents, you get their DNA, but you can change your bloodline, right? Like you can truly change your entire family from this point forward. Yeah. Right. Um, what What are some things that you've done to break your bloodline? Like you could have been a painter, like your dad, which mm-hmm. no no disrespect to him, but like you're you're, you're choosing to break the bloodline yeah. to create you know different levels of wealth, a different level of lifestyle, a different level of choices. Your yeah. kids will have choices that you didn't have when you were yeah. young, because their dad was a risk taker, bet the farm, back against the wall, all chips in, chip on the shoulder kind of guy, right? Yeah. So if somebody wants to recreate and they want to change, you've been laughed at a lot, yeah. right? Cool, me too. Okay, you've been made fun of a lot, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Everybody's like said you're not going to make it. Okay, cool. Now, how do you keep pushing? What are some things that you use as fuel to keep pushing when, you know, like everybody's not believing in you? And you're like, you got to believe in yourself, yeah, right? Yeah. But like, how do you believe in yourself when no one else believes in you and like you got to push through? One of the things you said right now, recreating yourself. Like I think that you always have to recreate yourself. Every year I recreate myself because every year is different. And like, even going back a, a few years, 
you know, when, when, when you had hair, you, you had a, a little bit of love handles and, oh, yeah. and your wife grabbed your love handles and you like didn't like it. Guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and like the, the, the stuff you do, you know, like you, like now I'm like, I got to get on more podcasts. I got to speak more on stages. I got to get more on social media. I, I got to ask Andy, hey, Andy, so, so what do you like? E- even two days ago, you told me, hey, Albert, I do this trick in the mornings with my stories. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're like in the, every morning in the st- uh, at 5 a.m. I do something with my stories. And I said, oh, cool. I'm going to do that with my stories now. So I, I started doing the same thing. It, it helped. It, it helped. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm getting a bunch of more views on my stories. Bro, I know so many little tricks, dude. Yeah. But, it's, but what happens is you, you're mastering. You got to uh, be coachable. You, you, yeah. you, you got to be humble because you could always learn uh, things from anybody. It doesn't nice. matter if it's Andy Elliott or if it's a, a, a young kid that's anybody. 16 years old. Mm-hmm. You should always remain you know, hungry, uh, coachable, and humble. And and uh, I I always I always want to learn like the, the why am I here right now, because I feel like I'm I feel like I'm gonna give value and I feel like I'm gonna get value. Facts. If if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. I would be back home, uh, with my family working. But what am I gonna make in my like what? How much money am I gonna make in my office? What am I gonna do in my office right now? Just walk around like an idiot, mm-hmm. or or do I want to get better? Do I want to recreate myself? Do so. I, I want to learn new things, even if it's a little tweak that I can make. Yeah. That's going to make me more money, more powerful, so that I can help more people. Okay. So you said invest in yourself, recreate, read books, be around the right people. You right? got to ch- and ch- recreate change. Means to physically really change. Be- because the how many people have you have used to be uh, big, used to be very successful. Yeah, they're gone. Ten years ago, they're not here anymore. Uh-huh. They stopped doing events. Uh-huh. They, they, they're not. They're not. Uh, you don't see them anymore. You don't hear from them. They, they don't. They're not doing anything anymore. Yeah, they're slowing down. Mm-hmm. So like, like, and why Screw is it that. that there's new people like you that are coming up, and you're like, dude, you're you're getting like a hundred grand followers every month. Yeah, but no, I get it. You're look. look they always say this: never let your fans outgrow you. Right. Never let your team outgrow you. Never let your family outgrow you. Right. Because that's important. Yeah. Right. Just because Sills your wife doesn't mean that, you know, I mean, I know that she said, hey, till death do his part. But at the end of the day, she shouldn't put up with you staying the same. You should change every day. So she's like, damn, man, my man just keeps changing this yeah. shit. Like she you come in the house. She should be like have those like hunting eyes. Like I want to get I want to get laid tonight from my husband. He is a badass. Yeah. Right. Most women, after they get married, they don't look at their husbands that way, okay? And most men don't look at their wives that way. Yeah. Like, I want everything to grow. I want my business to grow. Dude, when you walk into a sales meeting with your team, are they like, fuck, here he goes. And then they're like, you know, we got to listen to this shit, and you just ramble on. Or are they like, God, man, everybody get your notebook. Albert's about to speak. You know what I mean? You know he's always dropping bombs, right? We got to be ready. There's something today that's going to change our whole life, you know? And so, like, that's the deal. Like, never let anyone outgrow you. That's the key. That's why everybody is – they start out strong, and, and it's a new person. It's a new message to the market. So the market receives it. They pay money for a certain period of time. They don't hear anything new. You're gone. Yeah. Next guy comes up, right? And so, like, that's why I'm like, dude, fuck you guys. You're not going to outgrow me. Like, I'm going to beat everybody's ass. I'm going to beat my own ass. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to recreate. I'm going to go psycho. And, you know, I see you being a guy like that, right? Yeah. So you said self-investment. And then also, I think you said the second thing was you were going to say, was it real estate? Invest in real estate or invest in what? Invest in your, bi- in your business. Okay. In your invest business. in your yeah, business. Well, Talk in, about in, that in, for in, a minute. Investing in, in your business could be investing in, in real estate. So, for example, like, some people invest in real estate and mm-hmm. they get passive income. Like I invest in my business. I have a good, really good friend. He he he's a billionaire. He 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 started a business, mm-hmm. and he makes his money uh, through his business. Mm-hmm. And like I listen to like I, I'll ask him for advice, and I'll ask other people for advice. But I think it's very important to watch the source of your advice. Like some people Facts. like tell you, "Hey, uh, I check my bank account every single morning," and I get it. Yeah, it could be good, it could be bad. But like I, I asked him, he's a billionaire, legitimate, and I asked him, hey, uh, do you check your bank account like how often? And he's like, mm, I don't really check it. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, I don't really check it. And he's like, whenever I want to buy a thirty-two million dollar home, I just send a wire. I don't have to check if there's money available. Dude, I don't, like, I don't know if I'm dumb or smart, but I don't check my bank account. Yeah. Now Jackie may watch it, but yeah. like I don't want to know. Yeah. 
like I just want to go. You just want to create. Yeah, yeah. I want to create. Yeah, yeah. I want to work. I don't want to be the integrator yeah. who's watching the money all the time. You know what I mean? And I feel like when you do that, I feel like whatever you focus on takes over you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think so, I think I, I just think that's negative. You're you're going out uh, checking your bank account. You spend ten minutes. Why ten minutes? Because you go there and you, you check a you, you log in. Yeah. Plus, and then money. you're like, oh, what's this? What's that? What 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 did I spend here? What did I spend yeah, that? You can burn matches. That's ten minutes times three hundred and sixty five days. I don't know how many days that is, but it's like maybe three or four days that you're wasting out of the year that you could use to make more income. Um, so. And so so what he, so what he's saying guys is number one uh, be careful who you take advice from them. It basically if you don't want to become them don't be asking their advice. Yeah. And a lot of people go around running their mouth to everybody and that's the reason why they keep getting shit advice. Yeah. You know, I think you need to find the people that you want to become and then you need to and by the way, listen, this is this is me personally. I like to find people who were similar to me like how I am now mm -hmm. that have overcame things that yeah. I like, I'm going to need to overcome and then have created something great. Right. So like Andy Frazella, right? Mm -hmm. um, I remember when he was 17 years old, I've, I've uh, listened to this, but 17 years old, he was dating this girl and she broke up with him. And then for like five years, he was like, dude, I am going to terrorize her with my success. She's going to watch me win. And she went around telling everybody I was insecure and I was this way. And he goes, and I was, I was insecure back then. That's good. That was good for me to be insecure, but I'm not any fucking more. Mm -hmm. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Okay. And he's like, and, and so I like that. So when I listen to things like that, I'm like, you know, you said, hey, I was insecure. I was this. Dude, listen, who isn't in yeah. the beginning when you're trying to build something big, you know, yeah. trying to find, you know, that you're capable of doing something when there's no evidence yeah. that you could do it. The closest thing that I can find as evidence is to go find a yeah. human being that has physically done it and then say, hey, can you show me how you did it? Yeah. And then if you can just show me the play, then like I just run that play. Yeah. Like that's but, it. But, but you know, something very important for the audience, Andy, is, is like what I did, uh, I was very insecure, right? So when I got out of high school and I got into, into college, I started working on all my insecurities. So I was like super skinny, like, like the twins. Mm -hmm. The Macklin twins, you know how they were. I'm gonna send them this and video. And you told and you told them you guys are puny. <laughs> hey. You guys got to put some muscle on. So like I was skinny like that, like but I was like like bony skinny, like I was like 120 pounds. I'm like five nine, five ten on a on, on a good day, but I'm 120 pounds. That's very skinny for a five five nine, five ten guy. That's super skinny. That's like a Victoria's Secret model good, but not not a good <laughs> for a guy. So I'm like I look like the Macklin twins, but like you know shorter, but it's super skinny. Like so I I, I was very insecure. And then I had a big mole right here that I took off. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just very pale because I, I, I was just born insecure. My mom used to tell me, hey, stay away from the sun. It's bad for you. You're going to get cancer. So, like, I used to cover myself from the sun. I was super pale, super skinny. I mean, you had just that imagine. fucking mole. Yeah, I, I took yeah. the fucking mole off. And, yeah. and so I. So it was I, like I a triple oh threat. God, take this, like, you know, Enrique Iglesias, he used to have a big uh, brown spot on his face. He has mm -hmm. a huge mole on his face. Yeah. Like, it was like that, but here on my. On my so whenever I used to shake hands, mm -hmm. girls, I, I used to feel like, man, they're looking at a chocolate chip on my, on my hand. <laughs> and then I was so skinny. So I used to wear, like, long sleeves to cover the mole. And then I was super skinny, like Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Super skinny, like embarrassing skinny, and I'm like, man. So when I when I when I got into college, I'm like, I'm gonna get a tan. I'm gonna take creatine. I'm gonna get bigger. I'm so I worked on all my insecurities, and I became Jeez. on getting better, and it gave me more confidence because yeah. if you're like you say, if you're jacked, you're gonna make more money. Yeah. And we tell we and, tell and our, our friends uh, again, you're, 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 it's priceless your self esteem. Yeah. Which is like impo a really important thing when you're going yeah. into business or to sales or anything that you really believe in yourself. Yeah, 100%. And so I'm sure your belief like went through a, a whole new level. A whole new level. And and then another thing is like like dude, I'm I'm fucking in I'm, I'm fucking uh, uh uncomfortable right now. Like I I came to Arizona. I I've never like I rarely come to Arizona. It's fucking hot. And and uh I was in Vegas. So I don't know if I'm not used to it, but 
it, it's dry and it, I, I think I got dehydrated. I was in the sun. Uh, you told me like, hey, you, you know, like you're like I, I didn't drink enough water. I don't know if it was uh, the champagne that I had, but I, I got dehydrated. So I get a cold sore on my lip and I'm like, fuck, you know what? I'm uh, just just in time for the podcast. <laughs> So, so I'm like, what am I going to do? Fucking start crying and, 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 and be a big baby? I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm just going to show up. So it's the same thing when you speak on stage for the first time. When uh, Grant Cardone and Bradley bully you on the live uh, 10 years ago, you're not experienced, and you have an accent, and, and you're not good. Uh, you, don't, you don't have the experience. Like You just got to do it anyways. And you know what? Because I didn't quit. Because That's I right. didn't get scared. Like I remember Tim Grover. I spent a lot of money on him. I, I, I paid him uh -huh. uh, to speak on my stages, to mentor me. Uh -huh. And he said, Albert, all you got to do is you just got to be great for one hour. So, like, if we could do this podcast, right? We're, we're, we're here 30 minutes, one hour, 45 minutes, whatever the, 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 the time is. If we can just give a fucking strong 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, whatever that case is, then we could go back and feel like shit. But we delivered for that hour. That's right. And that's what Tim Grover told me. You just got to be great for one hour. It's like when Canelo Alvarez, he's gonna, he has a big fight. You don't think that sometimes uh, maybe it's fight, it's fight night and maybe they have uh, COVID. Maybe they have a, a cold. Maybe they have a headache. Yeah. Maybe they have diarrhea before they go into the ring. I mean, you never know what happens. You know they, they got still all that shit fight. going on. Yeah, because yeah, their nerves, it's a nervous system. It's yeah. going insane because they know how much is on the line. You can be their brand's counter. on the line. Their family's on the line. The shit talking's on yeah. the line. Their team is counting on them. Their family's counting on them. And you know a lot of people want to see them lose. You've been on big stages. Yeah. Like, well, like with the biggest, the biggest names, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt like shit uh, one of those times where you have to go on stage and there's like David Goggins, there, there's like uh, Patrick B. David or, or, or some, some of the biggest names that, that are going to speak. And then you have to go up there and maybe you, maybe you feel like the shittiest that, that you've ever felt. Has that ever happened to you? And, 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 and if so, how do, you, how do you perform? Yeah, so in the beginning, right, mm -hmm. when, I, when I didn't have the reps in, yeah. it was like, man, I hope I do a good job. But now, I mean, because you put the reps in, which obviously anybody watching this, like, you put the reps into anything and you're not going to get nervous anymore. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, Kobe Bryant, give me the fucking ball, right? What if you have COVID and it's a big day? Bro. I, I train so hard. This is an important thing. And yeah. I might, this is no bullshit. I'm not like giving anybody any, uh, like I'm the best, but like, if you train on something really, really hard, even if you have COVID and you're blacked out, you can still perform that thing and kick everybody right. else's ass. Yeah. Who's even healthy. Yeah. And so like, I think that's the important of preparation and practice and like really becoming, um, full mastery. Yeah. Right. But I will tell you, honestly, if you're not the best, and you don't feel great, you're going to get your ass kicked. Well, 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 think about your biggest competitor. Like, you don't, we don't have to say any names or anything, but just say, like, that's my competitor. Th that's the person I want to crush. You at your worst, do you feel like you could kick his ass? I'll fucking rip their throat out. I swear to God. I'm doing I, I think it that's already. Big. Like, you, you at your worst I'm coming should be after able to beat the best at their best. Yes, I'm coming after him, and I'm telling you, it's not even a joke. I'm just saying, like, even if I, you feel weak that day. Facts. There's no way, dude, because their intentions are different. I know what they want. Everybody wants money, and I don't give a fuck about money. Yeah. I'm telling you, I quit caring about it a long time ago, and that's the game, dude. Every decision I make in my company is like, hey, am I going to be proud of myself five or ten years from now if I make this decision? Right. Dude, dude if I take care of something, if, look, look, if a guy right now, if he's like, dude, I paid you hundred grand for something, you know, I want my money, I'm just going to give his fucking money back. I don't even give a shit, man. Look, dude, it doesn't matter to me. Okay, I over deliver in everything that I do. I take care of everybody and everything I do. And if I can't make you happy, I'm gonna give you your money back. It's fine. Like, I love you. I appreciate you. I gave you my best. Okay, like, we win, we go hard. But, dude, I'm after the five year game. I don't need, I don't need anybody's money right now. And a lot of people are playing the money game right now. And I'm telling you, dude, that's the reason why they're not gonna be around for very long. Okay, like, we're making decisions right now. Customer experience, customer service is giving them what it's owed. Customer experience is what the Elliott Group is badass at. And most yeah. people have a horrible customer experience. You know what I'm saying? That's the secret, bro. I just gave away the secret in everybody's business. You want to yeah. be the best in the world? Your entire company has to be immersed in customer experience. 
If you walk around here, you see the way our company shows you guys love, the way they treat your kids, the way they treat your family, the way they treat everybody. Dude, you don't walk into companies yeah. and people treat people that way. That's called customer it, experience. If you give somebody a lot of value and, and, and you feel like you give, them, you give them 100% yeah. and then they ask you for a refund, do you put them on the blacklist or block him or do you do business with them again? We love you, bro. Wish you the best. But what do you do business with them again? It just depends. Yeah. I mean, listen, dude, at the end of the day, I see people mess up all the time just like I messed up. There were some people that I thought, you know, weren't the best people. And honestly, they were just fine. It was me. Yeah. You know, I was screwed up. So, like, I, look, remember this. We took, we start, this, this is called the pod, the, the comeback kid mm -hmm. YouTube video. And the comeback kid means this. Somebody right now could be like, a, two years ago, they wanted a refund, right? Yeah. And they're, I'm just giving an example. Well, I know we're just using the scenario of refunds here. Yeah. But somebody's like, you know, I, I don't want this. I don't want, th it's like, dude, listen, man. Dude, I get it. Like, it's cool. Like, I love you, man. I'm not going to beat you here to to want to wanna better your life or want to believe you're capable of more or doing that. Like, I love you, man. Look, dude, there's there's millions of people that need help right now, okay? And and like you said, like fighting, remember when somebody sued you, fighting that thing? Yeah. Right? Like, dude, I'm not going to let somebody mess with me, okay? Like, I'm not a coward. I mean, I'll go after anybody. But my point is... If somebody doesn't believe in something that we have in our business, mm -hmm. like, we love you. Have a blessed day. Like, we don't need your money. We never wanted it. We wanted you to change since day one. Listen, our whole goal is that our clients, we want them to have the, the winning mentality. The winning mentality means I'm a winner. So if I bought a course or a training program and went to a seminar and the guy sucked and he didn't do a good job, I'm such a winner, I'm still going to get an ROI from that event because I'm a winner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find something that's going to make me money. And so most people... They have a loser mentality. So when someone has a loser mentality, like you just got to say, hey, man, we love you, dude. We wish you the best. Like, here's your dough. Have a blessed day. Listen, you got to understand something. Now they're on their own. Now they got to go find someone else. If a guy like us or a company like us that's amazing, that believes in people, is willing to, to give someone like that that's hard and difficult to deal with that amount of love, like they're fucked in the real world. They're mm. screwed, man. And so they always come back. Yeah. And, and so when they come back, I'm not going to be like, hey, you know, I'm like, dude, hey, you, you made a mistake. No big deal. We love you. Yeah. Have a blessed day. Come on. Dude, I'm just telling you, I've screwed up so many times. It's like the prodigal child in the Bible. You know, kid comes back over the hill. Dad says, you know, get the fatty calf, get my best coat, grab my ring. My son's home. Let's go. And everybody's like, he doesn't deserve that. He blew the whole inheritance. And he's like, yeah, but that's my son. It's like, dude, people screw up all the time. People are all going through tough shit. People are all going through struggles. And that's why I'm telling you, like, the whole point of this podcast is everybody, everything that they're going through, they can all rebound. They can all overcome it. They can all reprogram. They can literally be the worst of the worst, and they can become great. And, you, dude, if you put my whole life on display until I was 39 years old, I would tell you I don't like that guy either. So if somebody's like, yeah, but you don't understand. Hey, dude, I understand. I didn't like that guy either. Okay, I wish I was around the right people. I wish I had the right influence. I wish I was plugged into circles like I am right now. I wish I was plugged into information like I am right now. I wish I was going to the gym like, like I do right now. I wish I was being good to my wife and my kids and myself. I was pretty shitty to me. No wonder I was shitty to everybody else. And so like when you can tell someone that, hey, you can do all that and then from today forward you can restart, like I think people want that message. Right. I think, and by the way, it is the truth. Human beings are resilient. Um, we'll end it with this, and, and, I'll, and then, and then you, you can actually end the part. But my, my wife's brother got jumped in Mexico. Mm -hmm. July 1st, we got a call, right, which is this is like a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. He's dead in the hospital, brain dead. He's dying. Jackie takes a flight out to Mexico City, right, straight up. The hospital L goes. Last month. Uh -huh, this last month, okay. Hospital goes, uh, he's going to die, or he, he's basically already dead. And uh, Jackie goes, well, then we're going to switch him to another hospital right now. They go, you can't unhook him. You can't unhook If you unhook him, he's going to die. But you already said he's dead. Yeah, but he's not dead yet, but he is going to die. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, then I'm moving him to this other hospital. And they go, if you unhook him, you just killed your brother. Okay. So what is it? Are you guys going to save him and he's going to live? Or I unhook him and he's going to die and it's my fault? What is this here? Her whole family freezes. Nobody can make a decision. Jackie goes, get the fucking private ambulance here. We're moving him now. They go, if you move him, you just killed your brother. She goes, and she goes, the whole time I can hear my brother saying, you're going to let me fucking die in this piece of shit hospital? Get me the fuck out of here. 
So she goes, dude, private ambulance, let's go. And anyways, long story short, his brain was like 18% fluid in the back of his brain. And they said if 2% more fluid gets in there, he's paralyzed immediately. There's no chance of recovery. He's going to be a vegetable. If he gets one speed bump on a 45-minute travel in Mexico City, one speed bump, he's done. They get him in. They get him to the other hospital. She takes the risk. This is all about taking risks. She takes the risk, go to the other place. When they get there, he was at 18%. When they got there, he was at 14%. He went down four points. Dude, tell me how that happens. She had the courage to take a shift, make a move, and it didn't go bad like everybody said. It went to the positive. Now, secondly, yeah. she gets him to Mexico. Uh, she gets him to this new hospital. He starts recovering. The, and by, when I say recovering, like he's still on life support. He's still breathing out of a tube. He's still, he's still eating out of a tube. He can barely open his eyes. He can't speak. He can't talk. He can't do nothing. But he starts writing on a board. What you, you know? What's your daughter's name? Writes down her name. What's your name? What year is it? Just pretty simple shit. Okay? One eye's open, one eye's closed. Still looking like a vegetable. They say, well, there's no way it's going to take at least years. He'll never walk again. He'll never do this again. He'll never do that again. He'll never. They go through this whole thing. That's why I got to tell you, no matter who tells you something can't happen, like that's all bullshit. Human beings are resilient. It's just how hard are you willing to push and who are you teamed up with? My wife saved her brother. Now watch this. She... After being there for a week with him, right, is recovering him, she goes, we need to make a move again. And literally, she goes, we're going to get a private jet. We're flying him from Mexico City to Phoenix. We're going to fly him here. They go, you can't, if you take him in air flight with that pressure, with his, with his brain injury, with everything, he'll die in the airplane. If, we, if you take your brother, you're going to sign these forms right now saying that you killed your brother in the airplane. Yeah. Bro, listen. Jackie goes, no fucking way. We're taking them. So she gets a private uh, airplane, two nurses, a doctor, unhooks them, brings them on the jet, private jet medical, here, flies. We pay for it all, all out of pocket. Get them here. They said, you have to take them to a center immediately. You have to take them to a center. She goes, we're taking them to the house. She, they're like, you can't take them to your house. She goes, no, we ordered a medical bed. We ordered all the machines, all the oxygen stuff, everything. We're going to take him to our house. I'm having two nurses ready. I'm having a doctor in the house. And he's going to be around people that love him, that I care about him. He's not going to recover in a fucking hospital. We're getting him out. Dude, literally, just hear him hearing the kids play, things happening, life instead of death. Yeah. Bring him here. They said, don't do it. He's going to die. Guess what? It's a month and a half later today. This morning, right, we literally just went and got him x-rayed, got him checked out. He walks around, no cane, eats on his own, no, no, no uh, throat deal anymore, wow. no breathing tube, literally speaks great, running around doing things they said he would never do. In a month and a half, a dead guy comes back to life. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. That's a month and a half, dude. A month and 20 days from dead to walking around. If you go in my house right now, he's walking around. I'm going to tell you this, man. The fact that we could watch him grow that quick shows you that every day there's miracles that can be made in people and people don't understand how badass uh, human beings are and how resilient they are. So if you're fucked up today, 
Like, dude, you can change everything. That guy went from dead to being alive now when nobody said he could. So if somebody's completely healthy right now and they're watching this, like, dude, who could they become in a month and a half if they give everything they had? And that's the power of like, like what we're doing with other people. That's why we got to keep changing. Yeah. So anyways, this is called The Comeback Kid. I just told you a really cool comeback story. Um, Albert, let's leave him with the message. Anything on your heart, something you want to say to him. Hit him right in the throat. How old is your your uh, brother-in-law? He's 48. 48. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You saved his life. Jackie did. Jackie did. Yeah, and by the way, because she had the courage to make a decision. Yeah. The shorter your decision-making time gets, the more successful you'll be. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the biggest message here is is you need courage to be successful. We heard it before. You don't really need money. Like, mm-hmm. for me, like, I started my first business with 3000 bucks. That's right. I know a lot of other big, successful people that started companies with 2000 5000 mm-hmm. They borrowed money. They put it on a credit card. Yep. And they went broke. They didn't give up. Uh, so, like, if you're uh, thinking, like, hey, maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm Latino or, or I'm from Africa or uh, I don't belong here, like, like I, I'm, I'm an example that, hey, you know what, like... Yeah, you're living it, proof. It, 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 you don't have to be a certain color. Uh, like, like me and you, like you're, you're married to a Mexican, mm-hmm. you're white, I'm brown, we're friends, we're both winning, we're different, but at the same time, we're, we're a lot alike in, in the, you know what, like people you, you doubted quit. me. Yeah. People told me I can't do shit, and we just went out there and we did it. And, and even though wrong. people were, were telling us that we couldn't, we just went out there and we did it. Like who, who, like who would think that you five years ago are super broke and a few years ago, I don't know, you, you have 30,000 followers mm-hmm. uh, and now you have 2.5 million and, and growing and that's only on Instagram, mm-hmm. like combined on all the platforms, you're getting so much engagement, you're, you're on stage, like, like you're at a high level, right? right? You're like probably at the highest level you've been. What keeps you going? Like, like just a qu- quick question for you, like what keeps you going and what, why don't you stop? Well, dude, number one, I think there's someone on the other side of that camera, right, that I'm morally letting down if I don't keep pushing. I'm not even playing, dude. Listen, dude, I I lived my whole life, and anything that I did was all for money. And, dude, in 2019, I changed my intentions at 39 years old. I said, fuck money. Money's going to come last. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to start taking better care of my kids. I'm going to start taking better care of my wife. I'm going to actually start being good to me. And, dude, I got close to God. And, by the way, like, I'm not civilized, okay? Like, I cuss. People say, well, you can't be a Christian and cuss. Dude, listen, I know a lot of people that don't cuss that are Christians. They got really bad hearts, okay? So don't even give me that shit, all right? At least I am what I am, and you see what you have with me. But, but Andy, what were you doing bad in 2019? Like, what were you doing bad to your wife, to your kids? I was, I was average. That's what I was doing bad. The God of this generation is comfort. The God of the generation that we live in is comfort. So you were and, just you were just average. Yep. The devil doesn't have to ruin your life or make you. You weren't bad. you weren't you weren't like cheating, no. using drugs, drinking, no. partying. None no, of that. I, I partied. I drank. I did drugs in my life, but I wasn't doing that then. So 2019, your problem your problem was just you were just being average. I was being average, which is the most disrespectful thing to God, if you're healthy. That's it, man. Look, dude, the devil doesn't have to take you out by ruining your life. Yeah. The devil needs to take you out by making you average. If you're average, you can't help anyone else, and that's exactly what he wants to do. Yeah. So the next time that you're like, dude, I'm good. Okay, good job, asshole. You just fucked a lot of people. Okay? So, like, I'm after this, I'm after this legacy of, like, changing other people's lives. Like, dude, I know there's people on the other side of this camera. There's people that are going to be laughing. They're going to be hating, and they're going to be doing all this shit. This message today wasn't for those people. Yeah. This message was for the people the right message, the right person at the right time that are like, dude, I'm ready to go kick some ass. Okay, you know what? If we can just get five people today. Look, we hope it's 5,000. But if we get five people today to make a decision and change their life, the ripple effect of that will be insane. And the 50,000 haters that are going to hate and they're going to be like, oh, screw these guys and all that shit. Dude, those people one day are going to get a bad doctor's report. They're going to have something happen in their life. And they're going to be like, those motherfuckers were right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, I hope it feels good that you're sitting there hating. What kind of example does that show that to your kids? Yeah, you're going to let them be little gossipers and they're going to get and they're they're going to be little shit talkers too. Look, dude, one day they're going to pay because of your weakness. Okay? And one day you're going to look up and you're going to try to go for it and you're going to realize everybody's going to laugh at you too because that's what happens when you try to start something big. 
So anyways, um, I love my haters. You know, they're, they're awesome, man. You have a lot. Oh yeah. Dude. Anytime that you try to do something to help other people, everybody's going to tell you every reason in the world, why you're not qualified, why people shouldn't listen to you. They're going to make fun of you. And dude, these are the people that aren't causing any impact. They're not helping anybody and they're not doing anything in life. They're doing yeah. nothing. Okay. And listen, I don't care about how much money you make. They're going to laugh at your clothes. They're going to laugh at, you know, the way that you talk. They're going to laugh at, you know, who do you think you are? They're going to try to bring up your past. Dude, I love it. I love every second of it. That's food. That shit motivates me. Thank you guys. But what we are doing is we are burning their eyes out, right? With staying consistent, uh, stay consistent, staying true to who we are and just keep changing people's lives and, and not pivoting. And so we quick, need to quick, die quick, this Quick way. question for you, like, do you have, what's one thing that you're working on right now to improve? Like, if you could name one thing you're working on to improve, like, because, because, you know, you got the biceps, you got the legs, you, you got the money, you got the wife, you got the kids, you, know, I, I think you got the office and, and you, you have, you have nice cars and things like the home, even though you don't show it a lot, you know, but, but what's one thing that you're working on? And, and I want to know this for, for myself, like, what is a bad habit that you have? Because you can't be perfect. Honestly, like, I just want to keep my word. Like, that's my biggest thing. I tell my company, I tell every, that's, that's my number one thing. The number yeah. one thing that I'm working on is that if I tell someone I'm going to do something, I have to do it. And if I tell someone to do something, I have to be doing it myself also. I, I heard you're going to do a billion in sales. Well, I mean, I want to be a billionaire, but like. But I think you heard, I, I think you said you're going to do it because you did 160 million. I think it'll take us five years to get to a billion dollars. A billion in dollars in sales. If. If, yeah, in sales. Well, I mean, sales is 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 in everything. Revenue, yeah. yeah, in revenue. How many salespeople do you need for that? I mean, I don't know. I haven't I haven't quite figured out the math yet. I think we're going to get there by digital real estate. It won't happen from salespeople in house. That'll be yeah. that'll be a thing of a mixture of algorithm. It'll be a mixture of how well we keep our word, yeah. right? Because look, the the greatest thing to grow any business is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. That's facts. Okay, so no matter how good we are on social media, no, is that I, why you like to speak on stages a lot? Well, that's why we like to do the in-face training a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, our face-to-face -face game, in-face -in training, dude. If somebody's in a, a conference with me, like I'm gonna change their life. Yeah, like, dude, it is. I've, I look. I mean, there may be one person that walked out at an event and go, dude, I didn't, I didn't change my life today. So. That's why we love the in face game. People see people on social media; they can't they can't decipher what's real, what's not. It's really hard to see the heart on social media. Yeah. But when you're in a room with somebody and you get to spend five eight hours with them, and they literally get to see your heart, they get to hear the stories, they get to understand your strategies, you know, the skill that you're doing. Like these people will never be the same again yeah. um, because of those rooms, which is why we're building the Elliott Army Event yeah. Center because right now we've outgrown it. But the face to face game is the faces is, is the fastest way to do it. And what you guys do differently than other sales teams, sales sales armies, is that you guys all, like, the the bond that you have, mm -hmm. like, everybody works out together, everybody's, like, in shape. Like, I don't, like, I, I see other other top sales companies, and, and they're not, they don't, they're not in shape. Like, you guys are all tank tops and, and jacked. Well, the belief system, the biggest mistake that companies make is – they all don't believe in the same things. And people say, well, we got to diversify. You expect us all to believe in the same? Yes, I do, actually. When you go to hire people for a company, there should be a set of standards and beliefs that this company has. And we should hire people that have the same beliefs and the same standards as the company has. Yeah. You know, <laughs> people are like, well, we need to diversify. What does that mean? I'm not talking about race, religion, or color. I'm talking about the core values, beliefs of the people need to be the same. Yeah. If you come in here and you're like, dude, I don't want to work out. Well, how did you get here? Like, we've put our message out there in the world that we want to take care of ourselves, right? If you come here and you're shitty to your wife, I'm going to fire you day one. But, like, that's a core value we have. We're good to our family. Like, you know, like, like those are things that we believe in. And so I think companies, they hire because they're looking for someone to do the job. I don't think anybody in your company wears ties, right? Suits and ties? Uh, Jacob Hagerman. Jacob. <laughs> No, dude, you got to go see him. He's dressed to the hilt right now. He oh, really? Looks, yeah, he looks, he's like the the only one? he looks like the president of the United States. Is he jacked? Yeah, he's jacked. Yeah. But that's just what he does, man. He's just, that's his style. That's how he wants to do it. And um, and that's his deal. So I, I just, I love him. Yeah. It's just hot as hell. It's 120 degrees in Arizona. So. Will we yeah. ever see like Andy Elliott with a suit and tie? Hell no. I went out one time trying to wear a, a suit jacket. Yeah. And honestly, I, I felt like I was stuttering. I couldn't even get it out. I was like, dude, I, this is not me. 
Yeah. This is too weird. And yeah. then I took, I rolled the sleeves up and then I like unbuttoned my shirt. And then I was like, this ain't me either. Yeah. I was like, dude, somebody give me a fucking t-shirt. Yeah. And they gave me a t-shirt and it was yeah. an Elliot shirt. And I tucked it in and I went out with my slacks and I was like, all right, yeah, yeah. this feels more like me. Yeah. And so, but, um, but anybody watching this guys come back. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you did. Okay. It's all about from today forward. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about it next time, but like personal brand is big. Like you it's have everything. a personal brand, like starting with, like with your shorts, your, your, uh, the muscles. Like, I think that's a big part of your personal brand. Yeah. Um, right, I, yeah. I, I asked you like, Hey, what, what happened to your slacks? Cause you used to wear the, the slacks. Yeah, I the got cut, rid of I them. think the cut. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you're like, I'm, I'm just doing my shorts, but it's, it's your brand. Like people, people are talking about your shorts. Like, all the time. I love it. And, and it's just getting you more followers <laughs> and more money. So, like, I'm like, dude, you guys can talk about his shorts, but it's hey, making them money. But listen, I just tell him, I'm like, dude, listen, if you skip legs, I get it. You need to wear slacks. Yeah. But when you hit leg day, like, you can wear shorts. Yeah. Look, one day you'll be able to wear shorts, too. Yeah. Okay? Like, I'm just going to play back with them. Yeah. You know? But you got to know who you are. You can't care what other people think. And the most important thing is just, you know, like... Find your brand, and uh, I've worn. I love short shorts. That's how I feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, I like that, and um, that's my style. And when people talk shit about you or criticize you, you like it. You feel you, you get feel from it. I don't even care, honestly. If, if anybody even commented on this, um, I don't. I don't see my social media comments. Yeah. So like, you'll never even. I'll never even see it. So appreciate you. Thanks for feeding the yeah. algorithm. Yeah. Say all you want. 100%. It doesn't matter. And you know, people know who haters are. People know that people that leave negative shit are negative people. Okay, so like, you know, we love the people leaving, you know, great comments that are changing their lives. Um, and by the way, we make these this content not for people to comment. We make this con this, this content for people to change their right, lives. Right. So I appreciate cool, brother. you, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Hey, guys, make sure that you go follow Albert on Instagram. Uh, he's awesome. You guys can connect with him. Uh, give me your Instagram one more time. At the Albert Preciado or just Google me, Albert Preciado. Let's go, guys. Hey, everybody, have a blessed day. We'll see you in the next video. Let's kill it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.